see that. Yes, we'll be putting that in today's paper. Okay. Bye now. Oh, hello. Sad day today. A lady up the street has died. Now, looking at today's story, you'll hear about Jesus visiting a friend who had also died. But the most amazing thing happened. Find out later. Hi, Jake. Where have you been? I haven't seen you all week. Were you off sick? Not quite. I wasn't sick. Uh, my granny was, though. But now she's gone to a better place and I'll be with her one day. A better place? Has she moved house? No, not really. No, not my house. I know. She's at the sweetie shop. <laughs> no, that would have been nice though. Hmm. I think I know. She's on holiday. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Well then, where is she gone? Have you ever heard of a place called Heaven? Heaven? Yeah, it's God's wonderful place. She will never get sick or hungry or even tired again. And how do you know your granny has gone there? Well, you see, my granny was a Christian. She loved God and followed his son, Jesus. Jesus was kind of like her friend. So when she died, she knew that she would join them in heaven. Oh, I see. And you said you would join her there one day? Yeah, because Jesus is my friend too.
Hello, and welcome to this latest news report from Abbey Press. Breaking news just in. A man from Ballyclare believes he has found the secret of everlasting life. Reported to be nearly 50 years old, he still only looks in his 20s. On more serious news, continuing stories are coming in reporting that the man called Jesus is continuing to do miracles. So now we're going to head out to our outside reporter, Colin, for more news. Yes, thank you, Colin. I'm here on location at the home of Mary and Martha, whose brother Lazarus is reported to have died and then been brought back to life. This place is supposed to have been once a very happy place, but since the death of their brother, Mary and Martha have become very distraught. Mar Mary and Martha are said to have been more upset because they asked their friend Jesus to come and to help them. They knew that he had made other people well, he had fed a huge crowd of people with only five loaves and two fish, and even though he looked ordinary, he was a very special man. People have said that they sent a message to Jesus, and even though he had taken a long time for that message to arrive, Jesus then took a further two days before coming to Bethany. And by that time, Lazarus had died and been buried. Now back to the studio. Do you ever wonder what happens when you die? The Bible tells us that the real us, our souls, will live on and will meet God. And this we can find difficult. If we've done things that are wrong, and we've done things that displease God, or we haven't said sorry for the things that we've done wrong, God won't want us to be with him. And when we've done something wrong, we know that we need to be punished, and that's what scares us. When we do things wrong at home or in school, we know that our parents or our teachers will be unhappy with us, and that they need to do something that will help us to learn not to do these things again. And that's what we call punishment. But God doesn't want to punish us. He has made a way for us to be with him forever. And we will hear about that later. In our story, eyewitnesses confirmed that Mary and Martha were very upset with Jesus because he hadn't come sooner to see them. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he said a very strange thing to Martha. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, he shall live. To be resurrected means to be given life again. Everyone will die at some point, but if we depend on God, we will live on forever with him in heaven. Martha knew this, and that's why she wanted Jesus to come to see her brother. Martha believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God. The question for you is, do you know him? Do you know Jesus as the Christ, the Son of God? When we think of people dying, we think of Jesus dying, we always think about his death upon the cross. In those days, people who were punished for things that they've done wrong were treated very badly. And that was the case for Jesus. Jesus never did anything wrong, but it was all part of God's plan for us. The cross was a way of punishing people for their crimes, and God made Jesus take the punishment for you and for me. For the things that we would do in the future, and Jesus, he went to the cross for that. If someone else takes your punishment, then you're free to go. You don't have to do anything. But the great news is, just like in our story of Lazarus, Jesus was able to do something no one else could do. Even though he knew Lazarus had been dead for a few days, he was so upset for his friend and his family that he asked the tomb to be opened. Can you imagine what that must have been like? How worrying that would have been for Mary and Martha. But Jesus prays to his father, that the people standing around him would believe that he was from God. He shouted, 
Lazarus, come out. You see, Jesus has the power over death. If we believe in him, he will make us ready to live with God. We do not need to fear death. We do not need to fear meeting God. Because Jesus has conquered death. What about you? Are you ready to meet God? Maybe you've heard all this before. Or maybe you're just wondering what happens when you die. To know how to be ready to meet God, we need to believe that Jesus is God's son and that he died to take our punishment. Mary and Martha both knew this and that's why they asked Jesus to come. We need to submit our lives to him and live our lives for him now to please God. And when the time comes, whether that is now or whether that is long time from now, you will be resurrected and have eternal life in heaven. Hello, and it's memory first time. Now, did you know that there was an explorer and he went looking for the fountain of youth? So apparently there was this water and if you drank it, you would never die. Now, Christians uh, don't have to worry about these things. And our Bible for today tells us so. But I have uh, misplaced my Bible first out and around the church. So we're going to go and find it. And I want you to try and remember every single bit of it. All right, let's go search. Where, oh, where could it be? Oh, find the first bit. I am the resurrection. Oh, resurrection, that means can be brought to life again. Oh, and the life. Okay, life. Now, life's not just about being alive, it's about truly living. Now, this is, this is such a big church in here. I hope you've been in here. You should come and visit. Wow, look at all these chairs spaced out. Oh, find the next bit. He who believes in me, oh, capital M, that must mean Jesus. He who believes in me. Okay, do you remember that? Do you remember those bits so far? Let's see, what else do we have? Oh, wait. I could have sworn there was one. Oh, there it is. Will live even though he dies. What was that whole first again? Can you remember it? Oh, this tells us where it's from. What's that say? John 11, verse 25. So, do you remember it? Well, let's go over it one more time. Okay, so is it in order? I don't think I've got it right. What should be coming first? How does it start? Hmm, let me see if I can do it again. I think I've got it right now. Let's read it again. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. John chapter 11, verse 25. So what does that verse really mean? Well, when Jesus says he is the resurrection and the life, uh, Jesus, the son of God, is the creator of all life. He has power over life and death. And he proved this when he was resurrected, brought back to life after dying on the cross. And he has the power to give not only earthly life, but also eternal life. And that means that it, it doesn't end when a person dies. The next bit, he who believes in me, um, Jesus is making a promise to each one who believes in him. And if you believe in Jesus, he can save you from all the sins and all the bad things that you know you have in your life and he takes that away so your sins are forgiven because jesus took the cost for that jesus paid the price and the price was death the price is death and if you haven't believed in jesus today and maybe it may take you a while to truly believe but if you haven't you really need him. You need to be rescued. And Jesus is the great rescuer. Hello, so today I'm going to 
today you are learning about the resurrection. Now we're going to do a craft that shows Jesus rising from the dead and leaving an empty tomb. So what you'll need today is your paper cup, a lollipop stick, a white piece of card, some glue and then some felt tips as well. Okay, so we'll get started. So if you get your cup, what I want you to do on your cup is to draw a tomb. So this is a tomb that I've drawn earlier. So we've got the big rock and then we've got the big boulder and then the empty tomb that's left behind. So if you get your felt tips, I want you to draw a lovely big tomb on the side of your white cup. Okay, so once you've drawn your tomb um, and the stone rolled away on your cup, what we're gonna do is get you a white piece of card and I want you to draw Jesus on it, okay? So this is my attempt at drawing um, Jesus. So you can do be as detailed as you like or even just a stick man if that's all you can draw. But here's my Jesus drawn on my white piece of card. Okay, so once you've done that, so you've got your tomb and you've got Jesus on your card, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your lollipop stick, okay? And get some glue. And we're gonna put a little bit of glue onto our lollipop stick. Okay, so if we get our lollipop stick and just put a little bit of glue on the top of the stick, okay? You don't wanna to put too much on. Um, we're just gonna do a little bit at the top. Get your Jesus and put the blank side and stick it on to your lollipop stick, okay? So make sure that's stuck on nicely. All right, so that's stuck on for me. So what you're gonna do is get your cup. And if you notice at the bottom of your cup, there should be a hole in the bottom. Okay, so what you're gonna do is slide Jesus on his stick through the hole in the cup. Okay, so now what you can do is we have the tomb on our cup and then if you push the stick up, we have Jesus rising up from the tomb, rising up from the dead. So I'll show you again. So we've got our stick in the cup and whenever you push the stick, up comes Jesus. All right, easy peasy. So. I hope you enjoy doing this craft. All right. Well, when the day started, I thought it was a very sad day. But what Jesus did proved that dying doesn't have to be sad. Not if you believe in Jesus. Jesus has the power over life and death. It's amazing. It's incredible. And if we believe in him, we'll always live. I better ring somebody. I got one of those new automated telephones. Let's try it out. It's it's force activated. Uh, hey brushy, hey brushy. Uh, no, no, it must be. Uh, okay, brush. Okay, brush. Call my friend. The number you have reached has been Hello, brush. Hello. No, brush, no working. So I guess it's time for another song. This up. I'll get it started.
Sunday, 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 Sunday,